Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to show you how you can use your original N64 controllers on your Nintendo Switch when you're playing Nintendo 64 games via the online expansion pack. So this will also work for normal Switch games as well, but for this video I'm just going to show you it working on N64 games. So these are the original controllers. I'm going to show you them both working as two player. I'm going to show you what happens when you use a rumble pack or a controller pack. And then I'm going to show you a different setup which allows you to actually remap the buttons. So this might be useful for a game like Sin and Punishment when you want to use these buttons here and it won't allow you to remap them via the Switch software. So uh, quite a lot to cover. Let's get started. So obviously this is not going to work natively, but we need to use adapters. Now of course you can buy the wireless N64 controller which does look quite nice. The one that's just come out. At this moment in time they're out of stock so I can't actually uh, try and get one. But this video is more for if you want the actual original hardware to see what it feels like. Now, if you're interested, I will also be doing another video on using the Sega Mega Drive or Sega Genesis six button controller and three button controller on the Nintendo Switch when you're using the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis online expansion pack as well. So I'll link to that at the end of the video and also down in the description. So I've tried various different adapters. In my opinion, at this moment in time, the easiest way to do it is just to use this May Flash adapter here. This will allow two different players to play on here if you have two controllers. But if you want to see the remapping of the buttons, we need to use a completely different setup. So I'll show you that later on in the video. Now this is plug and play. It's particularly easy to use. Right, let's plug it into a USB port on the side. This will also work well, uh, if you use a USB-C connection out of here on the go cable. It will also work if you want to use it in uh, tabletop mode, but just for the ease of filming, we'll do it via the dock. So if you have a look here now, I've plugged it in here and can you see we've got a red light here. When it ships, it might have one of three different colors. All you have to do is hold down the home button for a few seconds until it cycles through the different colors. So you can see there, it's now gone to green and uh, press it again. It will go to blue. But for the switch, we want it on the red input. So press and hold it again. This will also do features like turbo, rapid fire, stuff like that. So there we go, that is that. Then all we have to do is get our N64 controller and plug it into here. In fact, let's plug in this one into here as well for player two. And now they are both connected, check it out. If I go up here, you can see it is now working. This is working as an analog stick, I'll show you that in a minute. D-pad here. And also, uh, the uh, buttons here, but look, can you see they're inverted? Yeah, so this is one of the flaws. This is why if you watch till the end of the video, I'll show you a way that you can remap the buttons so you can get these working perfectly. But if you have a look here, left and right work fine, but down is up and up is down. Yeah, and this one here. Right, let me just show you the uh, current buttons as they stand by default. Now with these, you can't actually remap the buttons because they're down as a USB controller. So if I was to go down here and go to controllers and sensors and go to change button mapping, you can see here, cannot be changed, cannot be changed for these two because they're recognized as USB controllers. So let me just show you the uh, current button layout. So we'll go down to test input devices and we have B is actually A, A is B, start is plus, Z is ZL, we have left, right, and then we have the D-pad here. As far as it being responsive, check this out. So I can't detect any lag when I'm using that whatsoever, and it's the same with this one here. Now, let's say if you wanted to use the turbo feature here, what we would do is we would hold down turbo and the button you want to use as turbo for just uh, a second together. So let's use this one here, which will be A, so press it here. And now every time we press that, can you see there? Let's just do some different ones so you can see the difference. Now, ready? Now, if we do it again, and also when we press it here, you can see it's kind of flashing. If we do it again, it will hold it on forever. 
and now watch this it will just keep going yeah to cancel it we just do it twice and also you can do the turbo for player two as well now let me show you the analog sticks because it is really nice works really well as an analog stick so let's get out of this and let's go up to calibrate control sticks and do this here now watch this look how res uh, look how responsive it is look at that all the way Ta -da! so you can see it's fully analog and you have a nice bit of control over it. it feels really really smooth yeah now let me show you the right analog stick again this is digital so it's not actually right analog it's working as a right analog stick but it's just digital yeah now remember i said down is up and up is down you can see it there yeah now we also have a home button here which if we tap will bring us home here like that now for those of you who are wondering you can't use this to wake up your switch once it's in sleep mode so you have to use your joy-con or another official switch controller now let me set myself up as two player on here it's a shame you can't remap the buttons in the actual n64 games themselves because then you see you could really make the most out of this here all right let's go to mario kart 64 and i'll set up two player now i never had the n64 when i was younger so all these games are completely new to me but i'll show you try to show you a little bit of gameplay Right, so that's uh, towed up the top here, and you can see the analog stick working as an analog stick. If I was to break and then press back, you can see it goes back here. Let me just get a power up here, and I think, is it this one? Yeah, there we go. And that's to drift around the corners. This right uh, button up here. Oops, wrong way. So you can see that it is, uh, it is completely playable if you knew how to play it. I'll just show you the player two in a minute. Okay, and you can do that to uh, pause the game or quit. Continue, and now let's go on to player two, which will be down the bottom. And again, you can see that work in there. And brake and reverse. Right, so I think I'm gonna show you, oh, rumble pack and uh, controller pack. Unfortunately, let's just pause that. Unfortunately, they do not work. So when you put the rumble back in here, I've gone onto games that support it. So I just wrote down a little list of the games that are on here that support it. And originally, uh, Star Fox 64, Super Mario 64, Ocarina of Time, Mario Kart 64 uh, should support it. Unless maybe that's the Japanese version. And also Mario Tennis. Unfortunately, none of them are making any difference with the Rumble Pack in here. And I have got batteries and everything in here, which you would expect it not to work. You know, it's not going to work, is it? And also, even though this might ask to put in the controller pack, when you put the controller pack into it, it does absolutely nothing either. So the controller pack and, and the, uh, the Rumble obviously don't work which you would expect them not to work right okay now let's say if we want it to do mapping off the buttons let me show you the setup that would work for that now to allow you to map your buttons we're going to use this device here this is a titan one adapter and we're also using this here plugged into an n64 controller adapter made by mayflash now this has two ports but you can only use it as one player so now with this here, it's mimicking a pro controller, so we can actually remap the buttons on the Nintendo Switch, but it still won't allow you to remap buttons like these ones here. So in this instance, when I put it to number two here on the program, I've remapped them on the PC using G-Tuner via the software there, but you can do simple remaps via the Nintendo Switch because it sees it as a pro controller. So we're gonna plug this into here, and we're gonna plug this into here. 
And now we're going to plug this into here. It doesn't always work first time. It needs to come up with a zero if it doesn't work. Okay, if it doesn't work, you just unplug it and plug it in again, but it did work there. So now you can see that if I was to move around here, I can go down and let me just show you the button remapping. Change button mapping. And you can see here, it recognizes it as a pro controller. So now I can map the buttons here to do simple button mapping. But what we want to do is we want to uh, do it via the, we've done it via the console tuner because I wanted to set the buttons up here for sin and punishment. So let me show you that game here. Now again, I haven't played this game before, but I read articles that people are saying it's hard to play because the button mapping is incorrect. Let me swap this to number two down here. So you press that little button, I've moved it to number two. And now, look here, if I hit this button here, you can see it's going to the right and this button is going to the left. Yeah. So if I do one, two, it goes like that. One, two, hold on. There we go. Yep. And this one here will be fire. And then this one is moving the site around. And uh, this will be start. So let me just show you a little bit of an example. So watch, we can uh, uh, fire there, fire there. What does this one do? Oh, this is jump. Yeah. So I think this would be similar to what it would have been set up like originally. And then I can move. You can tell I'm no good at this game. <laughs> but you get the idea. You can see that the uh, the layout of it is, uh, it looks like it would be how you would use a controller holding it in this orientation here. Right, I'll just show you this bit here and then I'll finish up the video so you can see now <laughs> very badly. So that is it. That's the easiest way I've found to remap the buttons. I've got loads of different adapters, but this setup here is the one where I think it works the best. So that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big thumbs up and please subscribe for more, uh, mostly trying to fix videos with the odd little how-to video and uh, weird videos like this thrown into the mix. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, everyone.